All right, so today we're talking about objects, context, scope, bind, and timers, and how these things all fit together. And really what we're talking about here is the keyword this and how it works in all these different situations. So if we have a timer, so I set a timer for a thousand milliseconds or one second, and I run this in my page. This is the window object. It's the global object. It's the scope. It's what initiated this code. And that's going to work because right here, what we're doing is this. We're saying window.setTimer, window.console.log. Window is the object that's initiating this. It is the context that is running this piece of code. When you set a timer, what you are doing is you are saying, I have a function that I would like to set aside and then when it's ready, add it to the task queue. So when this thousand milliseconds has expired, please add this thing to the task queue so it can be added to my stack and run when there is time in the event loop. So we have this thing sitting there waiting to run and we're saying, write out this. What is this? Well, what is the context for this code to run? And it's going to be the global window object. All right, so that's this inside of a set timeout. So I'll comment that out. Now I'll come down here. I'm going to create three different objects. One be an object literal, one with a class, one with a function. Um, it's all going to be basically the same thing, but inside of here, we're going to create um, a method. I'll just call it some method and I'll do it in all three of them with the same name. So here we have our function, uh, whether you write it with this syntax or you do this, but not with an arrow function. So none of the functions I'm going to be using are going to be arrow functions because that can change the context and point to the global one when you don't expect it. But I have another video talking about lexical scope in this. You can see the card up at the top pointing to that one if you want to learn more about that. For now, we're going to be using just regular standard functions. And inside of here, we'll write a console statement, console.log, let us know which one we're talking about here. This one will happen immediately before the one where we say what this is. And I'm going to do the same two lines, basically, inside of all of these. So inside my object literal, there is a method. So if I want to call this, I would say cherry dot some method. Then it's going to write the console log statements. And here it is, cherry and console log. There is the some method function right here. And it is inside, you notice the curly braces right here. That is the object cherry. So this is this object right here. That is what the value of this is from inside of here. And that's because cherry is the context for running this method. We're saying, okay, cherry is initiating this function. So this function right here is stored in memory somewhere. Uh, it's connected to this object, but it's stored in memory as this function right here. So this function is stored in memory and cherry is the thing that's initiating this. It's the um, execution context for this function. And therefore, when we say, what is this? It's going to say this cherry object, this thing right here with the yellow cur curly braces around it. With my constructor, if I were to create another function here, let's get rid of the keyword there, and we're inside of Mango. Inside of a class, whenever you add a method like this, this is automatically this dot sum method. It belongs to the instance that is created by the constructor. So this function right here, create an instance of mango. Down here at the bottom, I will do exactly that. We'll say um, const mango, all lowercase, equals new mango. So I've run the constructor method. I've created an object of type mango and it will have access to some method, mango, some method, and it will write out mango, and then it will write out this. And this is going to be the mango object. So there is the object of type mango. 
So that is what this is. It's the execution context. It's this class. And then same sort of thing down inside of here. We've got our function called papaya. We're going to make that into a constructor method. We're going to make it uh, basically an object, a factory function. And we're, we will say const papaya, all lowercase equals new papaya. We're creating an object of that type. Now to add the method, we'll add that to the um, prototype of papaya. And that is going to be a function where we write out console log papaya and console log this. Same sort of thing's going to happen here. Oh, papaya is not defined because I said payaya. There we go. So papaya, and then we'll call some method. There we are. So doing the same thing with papaya, and we get the same results. So whether it's an object literal, a class, or a factory function that you're using as a constructor, when you call on the keyword this, it's going to say, hey, the mango, the papaya, the cherry, whatever that object was, that is the context for this. Now, going back to our thing with set timeout, Inside of here, this is going to be the window because this function gets taken and put somewhere. So if I come down here after cherry.sum method and I say set timeout, we can say cherry.sum method and we'll run it after one second. So here it is, cherry and window once again. Now it looks like it should be the cherry object because we're saying, okay, no, it's cherry.sum method. So it looks like we're talking about cherry being the instigator for this. It's the execution context for this. But really, we're not executing the function here. I'm not putting parentheses on the end. I'm just saying, go find this function. Oh, and if you're looking for it, it'll be inside of here. So what we've done is we've really just taken a reference to this object and we've put it here. So it's exactly what we did right here. And when we say console log this, it'll say, oh, hey, yeah, you're looking for cherry. You want to know what this is? What is the execution context? Well, inside of a set timeout, the function was put over there. It was brought back and it's being run by the window. So the window object is the this context. And we're going to have the same sort of thing happen here if we do set timeout mango and set timeout papaya. It'll be the same issue happening again and again. So mango dot some method. I'm not running it. I'm just saying this is where you'll find the thing. So after two seconds. So after one second, there's the cherry. After one another second, there's the mango. Okay, so how do we get around this? This is the problem that we want to solve here. I want to do something, but I need to know that when this runs, this is going to be the actual object that I'm inside of here. So how do I do that? All right, let's do the mango one first of all. One method that you can do to solve this is create a wrapper function like this. So here is my function that I'm going to run after two seconds. And now if I'm running this, I'm saying mango is the thing that's making this run because I'm actually running it at that point. I'm getting the reference to mango and I'm running it at that point. So window and then, oh, now we're back to mango. So this is one way of solving it is by putting a wrapper function around what you're doing and you're actually executing. You're not just saying, go and find that thing and put a reference to it inside of set timeout. This function is the thing that's inside of set timeout that's been put aside by set timeout. Here we're actually saying, make mango run this method. The other way that we can do it, so with the papaya, when we've got a, this works for, for all three of them as well. What we want to do is do our set timeout again. And we can say, you know, papaya dot some method. 
I want to run that after three seconds. Well, if we do it like this, we're back to that problem where it's going to be the window object. There it is. We solve it by using the bind method. The bind method, what it will do is it actually makes a copy of this function. It says, all right, this is the thing that we want to run. This is where you'll find it. I would like to make a copy of that, please. And when you do make the copy of it, can you attach to it a specific context? So I want to say when some method runs, specifically when this function runs, I want you to use this object as the context for running that. So now when I run it, mango and papaya both still know where they originally came from. So by using the bind method or by using a wrapper function, that is one way that we can get around this change of execution context, which at some point you'll run across where you write code and then it's not working because now all of a sudden your code is pointing to the window object instead of the object that you've built. All right, so I hope that helps you solve a problem at some point. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.